All right, well, this is the uh, second part. After, uh, after we get our jar pretty much ready to go, like I said, it wasn't clean, so I had to clean it real fast. You know, a little bit of, I got some uh, water over there that I had to put some uh, clove tea in the other day. I got some clove tea from the church I go to occasionally. I go to the church. Doesn't mean I'm religious. I just go there. A lot of times they don't even want me there. I just go anyway. Just go see relatives that don't think we're related. But, uh, and once you kind of get your uh, jar straightened out, I find, I found several of these mason jars with lids all over the place. I mean, they're laying in, you got a cooking school down there. And, uh, when I go to Grindstone over there on the other side of the uni college and university, you know, I see these laying on the side road. You know, I am in the Ozarks where the odds you're going to catch a couple of mason jars that might smell like, uh, you know, something with vodka and cherries in it or something right woohoo but uh yeah after i clean this out i got a couple of these i found and I, i'm gonna make good use of them what we're gonna do is i'm gonna try to make some echinacea tea i'm not gonna you know boil it down make extracts you can do that if you want to you don't really have to all you have to do really is uh what i have a tendency to do here is i just cut these up you know, we could probably sit here and do it like this. You know why I'm sitting here chit-chatting with you. But uh, after you get your jar cleaned up, if you don't know what these are, these are mason jars. Uh, I've seen these my whole life. B-A-L-L, -L, ball. Um, mason jars. They usually call these canning, but they're not really cans. They're jars. I don't know why they call them canning, but you're jar. they're a jar. And uh, I recommend if you're going to store anything... Don't use the metal lids because they have a tendency to rust. Okay? Use the glass, the glass snap. The ones that have the little ring that snap with a, the glass top. Yeah, I know they're heavier and awkward and you wouldn't think of, hey man, I can't take that with me in a, uh, you know, a wild crafting situation. Yeah, you can. Just don't, if you drop it on the ground, you know, where it's grass and dirt, it ain't going to break. If you're on the sidewalk or on rocks, yeah, you'll break it. But most times, if you drop this on the dirt, it won't break. So yeah, you can take this with you. Every like, I recommend a stainless steel container. Hey, any container I can get my hands on is an adequate container. And uh, these have multi-functions. Like I said, it's clear, it's glass, it comes with a lid. I can uh, make tea, sun tea, electrolyte solution. That's what I'm thinking, right off the bat. Echinacea. Okay, so what we're going to do is, what I usually do, right off the bat, uh, I pull the leaves off. Put all the little petals and the leaves in here. I pull the petals off, okay? Now remember, the seed stalk's in here. It smells very fragrant. It smells good, actually. And uh, you don't want to put too much in here because, like I said, the seed usually has some kind of a membrane on it that protects the plant. It's kind of like, yeah, you can have some, but you can't, you know, don't destroy the seed stalk. So what I do is I cut all the little, I give it a haircut. All the little pollination parts. So I'm going with this. What we're going to do is we're going to cut it down real fine into dregs. You know, just like if you were to open up your tea bag. See, look at all these little seeds and stuff in there. See, that's real cottony anyway. But uh, what I usually do is I process this down. Cut these down. And uh, most of the time it's just the pollen. And now you're fixing to catch on why I do the net. Because when you put the net on, you can shake this up, air it out. But if you're going to put water in here, right, and you want to drain this, now you have a screen to catch it. So you might want to make this just big enough. Cut this down. See, it has a base to it. There's a, I don't know if you can see that. There's a little base to that. And it smells kind of piney and kind of a, I wouldn't probably recommend eating that. I mean, you probably could. I said some of the parts of the plant I try to stay away from because it might be concentrated. You know, and we're not trying to, overdo it we're just trying to in, you know slowly a mild solution of it over a, several weeks you know what i'm saying we're just trying to 
do a mild solution of the, the plant over a period of several weeks. You know, maybe even a week or two. Maybe, like I said, we're trying to get electrolyte solution. I notice people try to have a tendency, like, you know, I myself have done it too. Too much, too much, you know, too concentrated. So we just cut this up in there. I'm shooting it all over the place, of course. And so when we fill this up with water, I got some, other, I got some tea too. I'm actually going to put some tea in here with it. We're going to make some sun tea and I can, yeah, I can smell that. It's very, it's kind of, smells like pine. Pine and just reminds me of a sunflower. If you've ever smelled or the, the, the sucrose that comes off of a sunflower. Yeah, and this one smells good too. So what we're going to do is we're just going to pick all the petals off. And the bees were hitting the pollen when I went and got picked these. The bees were all over. So. So just cut all the pollen parts off. Basically, we're just kind of breaking this down. And I, I said I just soak this, drink it over a period of a couple days. And uh, if you want to just dry this stuff out and use it as a soup stock or a, some kind of a, a food additive, you know, it smells pretty good. You just break it down, put it in there. See, look at that. I mean, that's just <laughs> that orange right there. And it smells good, too. So, you know, and a lot of times I used to just, I'd break the flower petals down too, and to get it kind of open up, but then I noticed that it started having more of a concentrated taste, so I figured it'd just be better just to steep the plant parts. And so pretty much what I'm just doing is I'm just breaking this down just small enough where it won't fit through the net. <laughs> Okay, I know I'm not making good work of it. My scissors aren't the greatest, but see, that's what we're getting to right there. And we got three different kinds. We got the Augustfolia, we got the Palidia, which is the white, the Augustfolia, which is the one that looks like the hybrid between the big purple one and the white one. And it looks like it's a hybrid or the medium one. You got a white one, a kind of a medium purple white one, and then you got, you know, the big bad boy right here. So the big bad purple one big bad purple people eater so just pull the petals off stick it in there and make sure because these are cultivated in some places publicly that they ain't been sprayed with anything that might be too out of the ordinary and so as we kind of break this down I usually just try to go for the pollen pollinated parts because you never know what's going on in here Although it's like a sunflower, it's pretty edible, but it can be a talk, you know, kind of concentrated, and some people could get toxic shock syndrome. I mean, I've gotten an allergic reaction to sunflower syrup off the plant before, and that's just because it's so concentrated. But that doesn't mean it's bad for you, it just means you just got too much going on. All right, see now, how we, see where we're going with this? We're getting there. And as we get done cutting this up, see, look at that good color right there. That's a good color. The color purple. But, uh, being an old friend that this is, like I said, I was going to go a little bit further into the antidepressant medication. Am I just depressed or am I sick? You know, am I spiritually ill or am I physically ill because I'm sick from what? Not eating right? Grandma's cooking ain't the greatest? I mean, what's the whole deal? I've been eating at a public commercial school that feeds you like a prison? I mean, what? Am I sick as in mentally ill or am I just depressed because I'm actually sick because I'm not eating well? Is it because I have bad behavior? Is it, you know, that kind of stuff you have to think about. Why do people take medication in the first place? 
Oh, he's depressed. Well, he must be a nut. Well, the conclusion was... I'll, I'll let you know why I don't take it anymore. The conclusion was, first of all, that it wasn't me. Okay? That's what the diagnosis was. It was like, well, it wasn't my fault. I had some other individuals cramping my style. And, uh... Let's just put it this way. They came back and said that there was nothing wrong with me. I was just a... Uh, active young man and uh, I had a couple I had a real bad skin disorder probably because of municipal water certain kinds of soaps being nervous from going to a school I didn't like you know that kind of stuff not eating correctly probably too much sugar and corn syrup but I always would try to eat I don't know, for some reason, I always like Asian-style Mediterranean food, you know, old, fresh stuff. And I just wasn't getting that. I had a wok, I think when I was about 14, 15, Grandma bought a wok, and uh, I liked to cook with that thing. It was just cool, man. I just dug it. You know, going picking your own food, fresh, foraging around, having an adventure. You know, bringing home fresh, quality food that you picked. You actually went and... Yes, because you can identify what you need instead of just buying something or getting something that somebody else thinks you need versus you're actually diagnosing your own health disorder and it's working. You know, this stuff works. So that's the great thing is they're telling me I'm doing something wrong when it works. It's like it might be wrong for you, but it works for me. See where I'm going with this? But uh, we'll just keep cutting the pollen off here. And uh, there's plenty of them. I didn't just go through and wipe the whole flower bed out. You know, I, I left some. But we'll cut these down. But uh, that's why I took some of the old ones too. We have the seed stock right here. And uh, I'm going to plant some out here by the camp. And when we come back next time, you know, when we refresh the camp, if we ever come back through here, I don't know if I want to come back through here, but... Uh, I do like the Ozarks on this side a little bit. I'm thinking about going more towards the spring, where some of the uh, the world's largest spring is. It has some of the freshest spring water anywhere on the planet. And uh, I think I'm going to kick it down there for a while and get my feel of some uh, clean mineral water, if you know what I mean. And uh, So, so far, we got this thing full. And like I said, you can fill it up with water, you know, and uh, put your little net on here like this. When you go to pour it out, that way you don't lose all your ingredients. Right? When you go to pour this out, it's a strainer. Look at that. Wait a minute. I did that wrong. Let me drop the lid off there. When you go to pour this out, you, this, this works for two reasons. Okay? This works. This is kind of a two-fold thing here. Keeps the bugs out, for one. Let's it breathe. So if you just want to dry this out or you, you, know, you put flowers in there, you like the smell of it. Okay, or you just want to do this, use it as a shaker, you know, add it to food additives, right? Grind this down. Use it as a big giant salt shaker. Or if you, like I said, you want to dry this out, put it in the sun, dry it out. That way you, it'll store, it'll keep longer. Or if you're going to do like I'm going to do as well, we're going to fill this up with water and a couple of different, you know, a couple of tea bags. That way we can get some electrolytes and some plant material out of this. And then when I go to pour it out, it'll strain. See, I'll just get the dregs and the small bits, but I don't lose all my uh, plant mash. And after this softens up a little bit, we can use this for, you know, you can use it for your skin or a wound. You know, if you got oily face, you know, you probably use that to kind of clear up some of the... But don't do it in a concentrated form, you know, after you drink it a little bit. In, you know in a weak solution don't you know some people this is gonna be like shock like oh crap that's strong well then you just you know water it down a little bit to where it's a little bit more tolerable but you don't want to just drink water in the summertime from the municipal tap it doesn't really have anything in it. it's got chlorine and iodine chlorine you're drinking swimming pool water I'm not I'm gonna drink electrolytes 
hydrogenated, you know, hydrogen and H2O with electrolytes in it. Real stuff. But anyway, after you get done putting this in there, like I said, you can dry it. This is good for drying it out. If you grind this down to a, you know, smaller, after it dries up, you know, it becomes easier to grind up. So you can grind it up, and then you can just season your food with it. Look at that. See, now you got a salt shaker, seasoner, so you can make seasoning now for your food. That does smell pretty good. See all the little... See, now you have a spice seasoner. It's pretty easy. And when you fill this up with water, which is what we're fixing to do next, and you go to pour it out, it strains all this up. So now you can have, you know, you got a utilitarian type thing. It just ain't one thing. It does several things. So we have a dehydrator. We got a basically seasoner. We uh, have a, we can make sun tea. So that gives us our electrolyte solution. You know, we're hydrated. That's water. You know, got to have that. So it has minerals in it. So that means... You know, I can be light on my feet, I'm hydrated, I have my minerals, I don't have to go and spend a lot of resources hunting, you know, carrying a lot of crap I don't need, and then I can actually just go and I can do longer distances with more nutrition, energy, chlorophyll, things like that. I can actually, I have more energy. See what I'm saying? It just makes more sense to do it this way. So, and when it actually gets mashed up a little bit from being softened up with the water, it'll, it'll start to it'll start to loosen up, steeping a little bit, and then you can start squishing this up, crushing it down, and uh, you can use it for other things. You can even make soap out of this. You know, you crush up flowers, make your own soap, because you know, this is what, this is what we used to do back in the day. But uh, yeah, there's several things you can do with this, but uh, as far as we're gonna go with this right now, I'm just gonna cut this all up, dry it out, uh, I think what I'll go ahead and do is fill this up with water. See, I have some tea in here, and it's in the bag, but, uh... See, the tea bags are still got dregs. It's got plant material in it, so what I was going to do, what I'll do is, I'll just, uh... I hate wasting this stuff. I really do, because it's still got plant material in there. And some of this tea has lemon cuttings, cloves, cinnamon, you know, plant materials that we're using already. There we go. And I just cut the bag open because a lot of times the bag actually interferes with the, uh, the leaching process of the plant materials. So you'll, you'll, you'll probably see me riding around. There'll be a bunch of grains in the bottom of my water bottle. We call those dregs. And uh, people look at me weird all the time, like, what the heck's in the... <laughs> Why you got all those grains in the bottom of your uh, water bottle? I said, well, that's real plant material. <laughs> that means there's real ingredients in there. It also gives me something to chew on, you know what I'm saying? So I don't feel hungry. I have energy. I don't have a, you know, I don't feel faint, get headaches, things like that, because you have to eat several times a day, and this kind of helps you out. So, what we're going to do is, I got some of the water, and this has been steeping in that other tea, and we're just going to fill this up. Boom. That's pretty much it for that. And you guys are going to do the same thing. Let me see if I got some tea here that I got from the other day. Oh, yeah, here we go. So this is, I mean, you can make a nice little companion for tea. This one's green tea. What's this one? This one's one I got from the church. It's This one's uh, chocolate chai. I don't really like that one too much. They got a mandarin orange one that's just a bomb. This one's lively lemon. That's perfect. We'll go with that one. So we'll put this in here. And uh, like I said, you don't have to use the uh, bags. I don't. I really don't like using the, the strings in the bag. It's nice that they're taxed, tagged on there, let you know what that is. And if you don't have a strainer, kind of like, like this, traditionally they would use a straw and put a screen on the straw and just circle it around and they would just... That's how they do it in Spain and some of the other countries in South America. And I would just use a straw, man, with a screen on it. A couple little holes. It's okay if you get grains in it. That's a part of the... That's a part of what you're doing. So I usually just cut this down. A lot of times, 
and uh, there we go. See, that's kind of what you're looking at anyway. I mean, that's what you're going for. Look at that. That's plant material already in there. Okay? So now we have plant material on top of plant material. And this is going to get you some electrolyte solution. And this is going to get you through, you know, when you sweat a lot. And, and, and you're just drinking regular water. And then a lot of people want to go for the Gatorade and the health drinks. And a lot of those energy drinks ain't healthy because you're not getting plant materials. You're not getting uh, nitrogen, chlorophyll, minerals, vitamins, sugars. No healthy sugar. I'm not talking about fructose corn syrup. Okay? I don't mind eating corn every, what, once every two or three years. Ugh. But they just ate, eat too, way too much corn around here and potatoes. So here's what we're going to do. I think what I'll do first is I'll put the lid on. Okay? We'll just give it a good shaking first, get all the dregs from the tea down in there. But you can let this steep in the sun. It's, I know it's getting dark. Ugh! And this works for other kinds of food too, you know, you can... Let this soak and steep. And it's probably going to be concentrated. And so what I recommend is, if you can't see through that. I usually water it down where it's just barely, where it's just barely got like a little bit of a hue to it. And that way I know I'm not, you know, overdoing it and it's so concentrated that's going to make me have an allergic reaction or, you know, knock my socks off or anything. But what I'll do is I'll bruise it up. Shake it, not stood, Monty Penny. Oh. All right. So what I'll do is I'll bruise it up. I'll put it in here and I'll bruise it up. I hardly ever boil this stuff. I mean, you can you can you can raise the temperature of it up to where the material will loosen up and all the uh, goodies will come out. But I don't recommend boiling it because that always destroys the valuables. I mean, you just want to get it to the temperature up just enough where the material starts to break down and it changes colors. So what I do is I bruise it. I'll let it soak. I'll shake it up, I'll bruise it. You're bruising the vermouth. No, I'm kidding. And if I had some berries, which I'm fixing to go hit some blackberries here, probably in the morning, I'll throw that in there with this and we'll have a really uh, kick-ass uh, beat the heat type drink. And as it, you know, as it sits in the sun, and you can do it just like sun tea. I don't know if you guys know what that is, but that's what the whole purpose of the clear jar is. And uh, a lot of the stuff's going to seep. It's going to sink to the bottom. See all the dregs in the bottom? That was the whole purpose of drying the plant material out in the first place, but we're sacrificing, you know, some of the vitality of the plant by drying it out, and then you would crush it up, and just like you would do tea. Okay, so now we're going to have Echinacea tea with lively, lively lemon and probably some blackberries. And blackberry leaves are you can use for that too. And that's what we're going to go for next because we're trying to beat the heat, stay hydrated, and full of electrolytes. Okay, so now we have our, and you won't need to be eating as much. See, this will help you burn off energy and cut a lot of that fat and water weight. Okay, so you're actually getting what you need. And uh, even if you're hot, it won't be a big deal. You're like, oh, so what? It's hot outside. Remember? What did that say on the Echinacea again? It says what? It reduces the degradation of exposure to sunlight. Right? Isn't that what we covered on page 266? What do you think? Yeah, it was 266, wasn't it? Right here. Let's try it one more time, kids. European countries use this as an immunostimulant for colds and flu, externally for hard to heal wounds and sores. Now, people that have problems with infections, staph infections, diabetes, hard to heal wounds and sores. Isn't that like, what, cankers and herpes? You know, that's what a cancerous sore is, a canker. They use it externally. Well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to use it in weak form, and we're going to drink it over a period of a couple of days. 
and it's going to be internal, but it's going to be in a weak form, a slow introduction, not just, hey, I'm going to take a whole bunch of stuff all at one time for the next, you know. We're not going to do that. That's usually where they go wrong, okay? So, uh, but right here it says, the antioxidant activity reduces the degradation of skin when exposed to sunlight. What happens when you go outside and you're exposed to sunlight and it's hot outside? What, what, did, what did they just say that again? Say that again, what? Antioxidant activity reduces degradation of skin when exposed to sunlight. See where I'm going with this? So, we're going to work on our Echinacea tea, right? Basically what we're doing is we're using a lot of these flat plants that are in season during the high heat months, you know, exposure to sunlight, sunflowers, cone flowers. There's a whole bunch of flowers that are blooming right now, and that's why I got this book. I'm like, well, let's go and pick some more. Let's go see what other plants that they have recorded in here and see what happens. But the key is a very weak introduction of slow, you know what I'm saying? Just slowly introduce it. Don't drink, you know, gallons of the strongest extract you can find and expect results. We're going to drink this slowly over a period of a couple of days. All right? After it starts to, you know, smush up and all the little chemicals, you know, are all going to be hindered. Yeah, it's going to look strong. It's going to look very dark. Okay? I know I got tea in here too, but we're going to put some other stuff in here. And as it melts together and starts to come apart and it steeps and all the little chemicals, you know, from the plants and the little nutrients and everything start to collapse and you know, all come together in this nice drink we're about to have. We're going to drink that in a mild form. Like I said, we're barely... That's what I've been doing here. And as you can tell, it's it's weak, all right? You can't... But you can still see there's particles in the bottom of my drink. I stay outside a lot. I sweat a lot. But that doesn't mean I'm miserable. I don't mind. It doesn't bother me. The sweating kind of does because of the clothing. Cotton's not really great in the heat. That's why I recommend wearing pff, hardly anything and going swimming a lot. But uh, for that kind of situation, you want to stay hydrated and you want to have a good, you know, you want to be, I don't want to eat a lot of food because I feel heavy, I feel bloated, you know, I, I can't, especially in hot, you don't want to eat a lot. You want to eat light foods that are high in nutrients, Keep you hydrated and electrolytes. I don't like eating heavy foods in the summertime. In fact, I don't like eating heavy at all. So this is why I opt for the, uh, we'll just say the nutri the nutri the nutrient drink here. <laughs> but uh, that's pretty much how I do it. That's how I beat the heat. And uh, that's what we're gonna use with this plant. I got a couple other uh, things I'll probably throw in there, but it's not a good idea to throw a whole bunch of different plants in the same thing. We'll try different ones and see what the effects go, how the effects are. But when we go to pour this out, we can use this to strain out the heavy materials. That way we don't lose a lot of our uh, ingredients, right? But that's one of the tools that I put in my kit. And, and you know, you can use one of these golf bags. I don't know, I don't. I think this is a small wash rag bag that goes with that big black one, but uh, I usually have a golf bag too that has nets on it, and I just flip it up like this. You know, you can do the same thing with this, but I always have, a, for some strange reason, I always put one of these nets, these little net uh, rags or bags or whatever in my kit. And that's one of the main reasons why, because I think this is a lot more suitable to what you got to do especially when you're hiking you don't want to carry a lot of gear you don't need a lot of gear for this kind of stuff boom you got your water you got your nutrients you got your you know what I'm saying you drink that I just read to you some of the you know the benefits from one of the ingredients in there it's a flower that belongs in the aster family at, at Easter remember Easter Easter flowers so with that I guess we'll conclude our uh, echinacea explanation and uh, use and as time progresses we'll come back and check on this and uh, I'll give you some of the results we'll grind some of this up we'll dry some of this out I got another jar over here 
and I'll grind the, we'll dry the rest of this out. I'll go pick some more tomorrow, and we'll dry the rest of this out and grind it up, and we'll use it for seasoning and uh, some other stuff and see how that works as well. Because there's a lot of it. I found a pretty good patch of it. And there's a bunch of other flowers in season right now that are blooming, and uh, I think we should uh, take advantage of the situation, especially if you're like me. I've been bitten by a lot of ticks this year and mosquitoes, and uh, I've been suffering a little bit for some ringing in my ears, and that's one of the signs of Lyme disease. Probably because of the fact I'm around a lot of traffic. You know, I have to do a lot of first response and courtesy patrol and things like that, and search and rescue, and you know, clear, in courtesy patrol, we, we clear a lot of road debris, things like that, you know, accidents, uh, first aid. And uh, it's noisy because it's on a very large interstate, even though it's in the middle of the Ozarks. I just live north of the interstate. So, anyhow, if you want to stay in good shape, good health, that way if you do get bit by an insect, it won't be a big deal because you won't get sick. You'll, you'll just fight it off. Your immune system will be uh, in good condition and you won't worry about, you know, succumbing to an illness. You might have a fighting chance of not getting sick. But uh, with that, I'm Glen Monroe, the Roman Gnome, and I hope you got something out of that. And if you did, hey, great. Use it to your advantage. Live long and prosper. Uh, subscribe, leave a comment. Need some help? You can identify some plants with me and help me out because, you know, I'm, I'm learning too. I don't know it all. That's why I'm using a manual. That's why I'm using a reference book. But as you can tell, there's a lot of plants that are in my area that are documented, been used. And I'm, I'm glad they put this together. And I, I really recommend that if you're going to do foraging and wildcrafting and survival type situations and things like that, to use this book. It really does work. This one and the mushroom book. And there's a couple other little things that you might want. You know, I'm trying to figure out if there's a way I can combine all these together. So you have the funguses, just for my area. You know what I'm saying? Just for my area. Uh, I'm in the uh, Mississippi Valley, Ozark area. It's kind of like we, we're in a multi-terrain environment. Okay, I'll just put it that way. And uh, I was like, if I had this book, I put that mushroom book together, and the other survival book that needs some... It need, I don't do a lot of trapping. I mean, it's nice that that stuff's in there. But uh, I don't do a lot of trapping. I do basic fishing and foraging. That's it. So with that, uh, take that with a grain of salt. I don't really do salt because it's a uh, monosodium. I do a poly polysodium, which is a mineral. I'm more of a mineral guy than a poly... Uh, monosodium guy so anyhow I'll see you guys later ladies boys and girls don't watch too much YouTube later